for the Lord of the harvest, they'll send you as laborers, and they'll send both laborers to his harvest. Then in Luke chapter 10, verse 1 through 3, when Christ uh, prays the tells the disciples to pray the same thing, then in verse 3 says, Go your ways, I send you forth mm-hmm. as sheep in the midst of wool. So God tells us to pray the prayer and then to go and be the answer of the prayer. Amen. He's supposed to pray. So we preach to every man everywhere. Mark 5, please. Number 5 is who we go to. As was mentioned, you know, when you have Jesus and souls on your mind, you don't have time to fornicate. You don't have time to get involved in uh, competitive jealousy of the job. You don't have time to get involved in the worry. You don't have time for all these worldly things to try to creep into the church. You don't have time for when you're just caught up in Jesus and the souls coming in. Mark 5, 19. This is when the man who had the legion of devils in him, in Gadara, was set free by Jesus. Jesus cast the devils out. And the man wanted to stay with Jesus and be with him. But look what happens. Let's look at verse um, 18. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with devils prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not. Now there's nothing greater than being with Jesus, is there? But Jesus says, in this instance, there was something even more important. Now listen to what it is. Jesus suffered him not, but saying unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them. How great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Some of you might have family and friends who might still be buying my drugs or alcohol. They might still be going to the club. They might still be looking for money to get which quick speed, whatever it could be. They might still be just hanging around with baby girls, hanging around, you know, uh, uh, old, old grandpa really, just sitting, sit, sitting on the stoop every day. You might have someone in the corporate world and all they want to do is get ahead and be on top. But Jesus says, what we need to do, we need to pray, we need to fast, we need to seek him first. That's the Bible. We also need to go back to them. Yes. Because we're not like them anymore. There's been a change. We're a new creature in Christ. We didn't tell them that Jesus has made me free. Amen. And he can make you free when you have to repent. Believe on him and now live a life of Jesus. And even right now, the Spirit of God might be bringing to your conscience. Maybe some old, old cousin, old friends. Have you been praying for them? Go back and with a phone call, email. Maybe you go back to where they are. Preach to them. The Holy Ghost needs you to go and preach to them before they are cast into the fire. Amen. Acts 26. The last section on who we go to preach. Look at verse 22. Paul is giving his defense to King Agrippa before he's taken to be tried in Rome under the season. He says in Acts 26, 22, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. We see number six and who we go to. We're to go to the small and the great. Small position, great position. Small number, great number. We preach to every person. Yes. We ought to get to specialize, okay? We're the church of the one and one witness. We're the church of the lifting our voice witness. We're the church of the tracks. We're, we're supposed to do it all. We're supposed to be all things to all men that by all means God might save some through us. If you see one person go and preach to them, if you see a festival here in the Tavares area, the every voice and preach to all of them. You see an open street corner, people going and walking, go out there and preach. You see someone at your work, sit down with them in the Bible and talk to them and witness. Whatever it takes that God uses you to go and preach to them. Uh, brethren, on the day of judgment, there will be nothing that we'll be able to say to Christ that could have justified us letting us so go to hell. Well, Lord, I need some more uh, time with my family. Well, Lord, you know, it was the, the NCAA championship was coming on. Well, Lord, it was Obama's inauguration. I had to watch on TV. Oh, Lord, and I need uh, more time to work. Lord, I was tired. I needed some rest time. Lord! No excuse to hold any water on that day. You better get to do what we need to do right now. Where do we go? Luke 14. We're going to these reactions. Close a couple minutes. 
why did I give you a couple, some more scriptures out of these specific areas? I say, why? Because after we conclude and you go out of this fellowship place to the next step in your life, and you think, okay, I have to go for Jesus, I have to preach. The devil's going to try to bring some objections to your mind. Oh, well, don't preach that. Don't preach that verse. Don't, don't, you don't have to preach now. Hey, you're, you might embarrass someone. Oh! <laughs> try to bring all those things. And see, when you have the word of God, the God's going to preach to everyone, wherever you go, all the time. Now you have that word of God to combat the devil's lies. You can stand up bold for Jesus yes. and be a Luke 14, 21, we're looking now at where do we go? Because we're supposed to go. We see that preaching our way. Luke 14, 21, it's number one. So that servant came and showed his mat lower these things. The master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring him hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and yes. the blind. So uh, Jesus says here, Go into the streets and lanes of the city. There's a street right outside his door. Go out to it and preach. There are people who come through there. Preach to those people. You probably live on a street. Preach to the people on your street. You probably work on a street. Preach to the people who work on, in the building on your street. The lanes. Go and preach there. Preach in parks. Preach in wherever people are. That's where God needs you to preach, church. Amen. We're to be a conquering army for Christ. Amen. Soldiers don't just fight on certain specified days. A soldier is a soldier 24-7 every day. And we are supposed to be soldiers for Christ all the time. While we have breath in our body, we should have the motto, have breath, we'll preach. Yes. Yes. Have breath, we'll preach. Yes. That's our motto as we go for God. So we go to the streets and lanes of the city. Where else? Luke 14, 23, two verses down. And the Lord said unto the servant, go. That word again, we'll see it in 15, 23. Go out to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in and my house may be filled. Says go to the houses and hedges, go to the more popular, uh, populated areas, and compel them. Compel them. The Greek means to compel them. It means to necessitate them, to force them. It doesn't mean you physically grab them and take them in. It's a spiritual choice. But it means that you, by the Holy Ghost, so present the case of Christ, so speak against their sin, so stress repentance, so stress Christ's death, burial, resurrection, victorious over sin and Satan. They can't help but repent. Believe and follow. We want to get being built up in the Holy Ghost, the Word of God. God used to force that spirit to break them. They can't resist the spirit and the wisdom by which we speak. Number two, we go out to the highways and hedges. And in these verses, we see who do we get? Bring in the poor, physically, uh, physically and spiritually, uh, the main. the halt, the blind. All around these people, because they might have experienced, at least physically, a lot of the, uh, they say, hard knocks of life. Oftentimes, they aren't so apt towards pride as those who seem to do well are. Right. And so they might be more open to the gospel. Amen. We have to preach to everyone, but notice Jesus, Jesus chooses the point that he leads off that we should look at. Also, because people often have to tend to overlook people who are uh, maybe maimed in a certain area or whatever. You don't know, I don't know what to say to them. I don't know. No, no, no. Don't let the devil dumb you down for that. God has not given you right. a spirit of fear. Go to them! They need Jesus, too. Right. Amen. Number three, uh, Luke 24. Where do we go? Luke 24, verse 46. Luke 24, 46 reads, and said unto them, Christ is speaking, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer. And the rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So number three, we preach among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So begin where you live. Your household. Your street. Your work. Your, your daily sphere of influence. Uh, you don't have to go to uh, uh, California first. If you live here in, the, in the, uh, this area, about our area, Preach in this area first. Yes. And then God and your faith will also take you further and further and further and further. Amen. 